All right, it's Jake Mace from Phoenix Longevity Arts. We're making a smoothie this morning, so I hope that you guys are inspired to make one with me. So number one, I take my Vitamix blender and I go get some ingredients out of my backyard or the front yard garden. Let's go. Okay, so first we have the living wall. And I have this nice dinosaur kale here. And some of the bugs have gotten to it, so usually I use, much to my wife's chagrin, I use some of the, um, the ones that the moths have cut. And I just check in to make sure there's no thing on them. And they're good, they go in. It's good, it goes in. Good goes in. The dinosaur kale is really nutritious. And then let's get some other stuff, so follow me over here. got some cucumbers and I'm trying this year I made my goal to keep up with the cucumbers so even though they might not be ready yet that's an Armenian cucumber they get a lot bigger than that but I'm gonna put that in there then we have this uh, stuff is really cool it's called tree kale so I've had never seen anybody in person that has tree kale only the guy that told me about it was John Kohler with growingyourgreens.com so I just take off some of this some of these leaves of tree kale and see if we can find a good leaf for the camera Sometimes I usually pick leaves from the bottom and try to just make the plant look a little nicer. But yesterday I took off a leaf that was the size of my chest. It was incredibly huge. So we got some tree kale. And usually what I do with the tree kale is I pick the stems and give it to my dogs. Because they love to eat the stems. And they need some greens too. So this way I've got the kale leaf, they get the stems, and let's get some mint. So my mint area out here has gone to flower. Look at this mint, it's called uh, lemon mint and it's got beautiful purple flowers. So I'm assuming that the flowers are edible. Let's try it, see if I die. Mmm, tastes like mint. All right, so we're gonna get some apple mint. Um, here's how I remember the mint. Apple mint has uh, fuzzy leaves. Okay, and then uh, orange mint has more of the round leaves like an orange. Spearmint um, has a unique smell. You can, it smells like chewing gum. Or I should say chewing gum smells like spearmint. And then I come over here and I get chocolate mint. That's in the corner over here. And chocolate mint has that hint of chocolate. Yeah, really good. And then I have this other mint, a kind of mint that I don't really know the name of, but it's back here somewhere. It's called, this is what they called it, uh, Mentha Spinata Mint the Best. Okay, so we got some mint the best. And that's gonna make this smoothie pop. And then we have the lemon mint, of course. So we'll take some of this lemon mint. I just can't keep up with this mint. Then I come over here. And I grab some aloe vera. I'm gonna break off a, I just popped off a nice arm of aloe vera. I keep it back in this side because it's pretty invasive, so this way it has this whole area to grow and propagate and go nuts. So we've got some aloe vera. We've also got the amaranth growing. So the amaranth puts off a grain when it's mature, but right now the leaves are of the amaranth are edible as well. So we can pick a few of these red and green amaranth leaves. Um, and look at how purple and nice that leaf is. So I figure there's some good purple antioxidants or something going on inside there. And then we've got um, one more thing I was gonna say. We got something else. We got some basil, come on over here. We've got different kinds of basil. We've got some Thai basil, which is doing really nicely. This is from Suzanne Velarde um, and Greg Peterson at Root Phoenix. If you look them up, Root Phoenix, like a tree root. And I throw some of that basil in there. And then maybe a piece of sweet basil. This is uh, lettuce leaf basil, and it's doing pretty well here. I got the little moringa tree starting as well. It's gonna be a 
a feature coming up. So I got some sweet leaf basil and then maybe some of this amethyst basil. We'll put some amethyst basil in there. So the basil and the mint will give it a very unique flavor. And then we have Aurora Aurac. I have no idea what Aurora Aurac is except for I know that it's edible. It's got a lot of nutrition and my system has never tasted Aurora Aurac before. So whenever I eat it, I feel super healthy. And that leaf as well is pretty dark purple. So these are two Aurora Aurac plants. One is purple, one is green. And I wanted just to share with you guys one thing. Check out these Asian yard long beans I got growing up. That is a long bean. And I got one over here too with the tree kale. Look at these guys. Pretty impressive. You guys see, oh my God. And there's just more coming here and here. So these beans are loving it. Um, but it's time to go and make our smoothie and add some of the fruit, vanilla, and other things that taste great. So let's go inside and do it. My peach tree looks like crap because it's loaded with peaches. I've already thinned out like 200 peaches off this tree. I've just picked them off. And I just didn't have the heart to thin out anymore, but the birds are starting to get it. And it's becoming so weighed down, I have three uh, rattan and bamboo sticks holding it up. But I saw a ripe one over here, so. We'll pick a peach just to say that we did. And they're probably gonna be really ripe this weekend because they're already getting kind of soft and you can always ripen them inside so the birds won't get them. They're small slugs, this tree's only two years old, but every year that goes by, these peaches tend to get larger and larger. And so I'm looking forward to uh, having huge Florida Prince peaches in Phoenix, Arizona in the years to come. All right, so we've got our aloe vera. Here's what I do, I cut it off so it's kind of a rectangle. I wanna say thanks to Brian Hot for this incredible cutting board. Look at this cutting board. Now I'm cutting in style. I take the edges of the aloe vera and I cut it off like I'm filleting a fish kind of, but I would never do that because I'm vegan. <laughs> Leave the fishes alone, please. And then I cut the base part off and I just, I'm trying to get the gelatinous inner core by itself. So I cut that off and then I go for it and I fillet this top part and I, I mean a little bit of skin is okay, but they say that too much of the skin left on is not good for your digestion, so. I've been eating it for a while now, so I figure it's okay. We have this gelatinous center, and it's got all this alien versus predator nasty stuff all over it, okay? And so we wanna wash that off. Now we have it washed off, so we'll add the aloe vera here. We'll take this peach from outside, and we'll cut this peach, so fresh, organic, Florida Prince peaches from the tree. I usually eat the rest of that, and I compost all the extra stuff, so all this will be composted. Now lately I've been adding in some fresh pineapple. Really pack that down. Oh, you know what we'll do? I'm gonna save half of this cucumber for tomorrow. Or maybe for lunch I'll do cucumber chips with some guacamole like that. Then we got some dulse flakes and these are $5 at Whole Foods and they last me a month. So $5 a month for dulse flakes, which are naturally high in iodine and in sea minerals. It's a wild sea vegetable. Then, we'll also add some kelp. Same company, USD Organic Kelp. Um, this got, I got this at Whole Foods. And you won't even be able to taste the kelp. Mmm, nice. Put that in there. My liquid medium is either coconut water, coconut milk, or almond milk. So today we have unsweetened almond milk, 365 brand because it's only $3, it's $2.99 for a gallon. And Whole Foods has that 365 brand. I fill it about a quarter full of almond milk, only about, maybe about a quarter to a third. Then I add a touch of vanilla. Like that. And then I add some of this frozen fruit, some tropical brand, some with papaya and honeydew and cantaloupe. Break it up. And then I have some of this with the berries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries and strawberries. <laughs> it's getting a little bit ridiculous here. Pack it down. 
you notice I have two bananas and we've let them age. So these organic bananas, see how we have let them have the brown spots. Apparently when the bananas age, the texture gets softer. So usually myself and kids don't like to eat it because it's too soft, but the nutrient value goes up. So I usually put the aged bananas in my smoothie so that I get all the nutrition of an aged mature banana. And then I add some water. And then we pulverize it. And we got it. So we'll drink it in style in a nice wine glass here. Stir it up. And we've got a little bit of a reddish, greenish tint to this one. So let me tell you how it tastes. It tastes like mint, a little bit of basil, banana, and fruit. I can't taste any kale, nor aurora. I cannot taste the aloe vera, or the dinosaur kale, or the tree kale. And think about all the nutrients that are absorbing right into my body. I'll see you next time. I hope you guys make a smoothie like this this morning. The good thing is that I take these smoothies, and I drink this, throughout the entire day instead of water, and that way I'm getting water naturally from my cucumber and all the greens. See you next time.